But what is Gumball Softmax? And this is exactly what we're going to do now. This is going to give you the reparameterization trick that you need, but it's going to give you give it to you for categorical variables where z is discrete. If z is discrete, it's a categorical variable. Its distribution it has, for instance, k options, and then you're going to write a distribution on those k options. And we have been doing this when we're doing uh, next word prediction type of tasks where you are sampling or writing a probability on the next word. And k in that case was the size of your vocabulary. So that's going to give you a uh, categorical variable. If you want to represent uh, these z's using one-hot vectors, they are going to end up on corners of a simplex because they have to add up to one. If one of them is one, the other components need to be zero. And these are the corners of a simplex. It usually has one less dimension than the total number of dimensions that your, or the total number of classes or your vocabulary size. And so far, so good. And then uh, these categorical variables have nice properties that their expected value are actually these probabilities that are going to come out. What is Gumball max trick? You want to sample or draw samples from a categorical distribution. So you want to keep drawing samples from this pi distribution. And let's just open the box a little bit. What is going on behind the scene when you are sampling from a distribution uh, over a categorical variable? What is actually happening behind the scene on your computer? This is what is going to happen. The computer is going to use perhaps an algorithm, and the algorithm could be one of them, could be Gumball Max trick to give you samples. How does it work? Let's generate a sample from uniform distribution, zero to one. And then whenever you're trying to sample from any other distribution, one solution is this inverse transform sampling that you're gonna sample from uniform. These are actually your probability values. And then you invert it to give you the actual sample that you're interested in. And if you do this, if you sample from uniform, take the log of it, multiply by a negative sign, take the log again, multiply by a negative sign, that's going to give you a sample G from a distribution that is called Gumball distribution. And if you want to, this is actually a good exercise. If you want to look at how this distribution is going to look like, keep doing this process. Sample from uniform distribution, push it through this nonlinear function. That's going to give you a number G. And then keep doing that over and over again. And then take a look at the histogram of your G. That's going to give you a feeling of what Gumball distribution is like. But anyways, if you take those Z, those Gs, and then you put them in addition to your, in addition to the log of your probabilities, that's going to give you samples from your Z distribution. And to gain some intuition, let's set G to be zero. What are you doing? If G is zero, and all you are doing is R max of the maximum log probability, what you're doing is looking at these probabilities and picking the maximum one, or the entry corresponding to the maximum one, if g is zero. If g is non-zero and it has this random fashion, you're going to keep uh, sampling from all of these numbers. And this is how you're going to sample from a categorical variable. So not only you want to sample from the probability with the maximum value, you want to also have some randomness in it. And this Gumball max trick is going to do that for us. And this is going to be the forward route. So if somebody gives us theta, the corresponding distribution is modeling these pi's, then we can sample from pi using the Gumball max trick. And here you are not being lazy, you're just actually gonna code it up yourself rather than calling Python, NumPy, or PyTorch, or TensorFlow to do it for you. That's the forward pass. And once you know your sample, you can get your function back. So was everything clear so far? Okay, perfect. But we are interested in going backward. Going forward was fine, but we went through this exercise to be able to go backward, to be able to take derivatives. The idea of Gumball softmax is to replace this max here, Gumball max, with a Gumball softmax. And that's all you're doing. You're smoothing it out. It's a continuous differentiable approximation to this argmax function. And in the end of the day, rather than having z's, you're going to have the equivalent version of them. Let's just call it y. 
or you could have called it z hat so y is the equivalent version of z where rather than using argmax you are using softmax and this is the softmax function and if you look at it here you have your g which you know how to sample it so that g is we are fine this log of pi is we know exponential function and everything else we know this temperature if you set the temperature to be very low then you're going to get your argmax function back anyways we are not done yet we just uh, reformulate it rather than okay rather than using z you're going to be using y when you're doing your back propagation okay perfect but at the same time we need something else when you're doing variational to encoder at some point you need to keep sampling from your distribution and we know how to keep sampling from that distribution from the gumball max or gumball softmax distribution we just learned how to sample from it but at the same time there is another term here the kl divergence of your q with some prior and this q here you need to know its functional form to be able to write down your kl divergence the question is what is the functional form of a gumball softmax distribution it's going to look complicated but there is actually a formula for it so you know exactly its formulation now not only you know how to sample from the gumball softmax distribution you know its functional form and then you can write down your variational to encoder loss. And this way you're gonna be able to turn your images into sequences of integers and quantize them. And this is exactly what I was mentioning. If your temperature is low, the Gumball softmax distribution is gonna end up being very similar to the categorical distribution. And if you sample from it, you're gonna end up with samples that are coming out of the highest probability most of the time. But if you play around with your temperature, the distribution is going to get closer and closer. And if you enlarge it, it's going to get closer and closer to uniform distribution. Let's uh, look at the visual description of what is going to happen. When you are going forward, you have your theta, you can compute the log of your probabilities. And where do you need them? You need them here. The log of the probabilities, you need them here. Then you're going to sample from the Gumball distribution. And the way that you do it is using this formula. You sample from uniform and you push it through negative of the log twice. You add the two, and then that's gonna give you a smooth version of your Zs. And those are your Ys. And then once you know your Y, you can compute your F. But if you want to differentiate now, you differentiate with respect to Y, that's fine. Now you can differentiate your Y with respect to your U using this formula here. That's just going to be a softmax. And then you're going to go this route, and then you're going to compute your entire derivatives. And this is how you're going to bypass the stochastic layers in your neural network. Was everything clear? Any questions? And in terms of applications, think of quantizing images or quantizing speech. Turn them into sequences of integers. And as soon as you have sequences of integers, you can treat them as text. So you can treat your speech as text you can treat your images as text and then you can do next token prediction or any other task that you like this is a really powerful methodology